you see her sister, uh, but she's gone now, she was here with the baby sister Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sarah. <laughs> Hello church. Hello. 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 I'm so blessed today with the testimony. Lovely things the Lord is doing here. So encouraged. So encouraged. Brother, to, to fall at that height and uh, for God to be with you. You see, God is at work. And, um, and uh, it's just good to see the hand of the Lord. I mean, there's just one thing I was uh, just a, a word for the testimony. Uh, I keep seeing patterns uh, since uh, I saw the little girl. Your yeah. yeah. I started, it started then. I saw a dress and then she was very sparkly, very nice. I, I love the pattern. I saw the other girl come in with a different pattern there. All of the see patterns, patterns, patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady came in, all of the dress as well. That's great. <laughs> anyway, so the white pattern was so magnified in my, my stay here for the past for the past few months that we've been here. Mm -hmm. I thought actually, you know, I thought you were something, you were saying the word. I see it's a pattern there as well. Which is quite good. So, so the scripture came to mind actually was uh, it is Psalm 139. God is uh, talking about this, how God embroidered us. You know, like mm -hmm. that, that picture. Yes. I keep thinking actually, it's almost like God was sitting down and really kind of create patterns about individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like uh, it's a lovely scripture, how God really put a picture in individuals. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, my goodness, me, Lord, you, you, you are amazing. Yeah, you have put these amazing patterns, all these testimonies represent what God is doing in your life. Mm. So the key thing is just to hold fast. Mm. Hold fast, the enemy is looking to 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 stain your, your pattern. Imagine that you have like lovely pattern come to the stain. Kind of want to cover it. You, you, you don't want people that people to say it. So for me I'm just encouraging you just just keep holding fast. Mm. You know those mighty men of David, I don't know if you remember those three. Mm. You know if you ever read about their stories. Uh, I, I encourage you to to to, to dig deep. There's a guy who was holding his soul. He killed about 800 people. He said, the Bible says he holds so fast to that thing, to that soul. Yeah, he was tired, but he kept holding to it. So the, the, the message is, don't, don't lose grip yeah, of what God has given you. Just keep holding it. Yeah, you, you might get tired, but just holding to it. But that's where the blessing is. That, that grip, that's where the blessing is. So God bless you. I'm so blessed to be here. Sorry, I'm just more blessed. <laughs> so blessing, blessing, blessing. Amen. 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 Well, we've been blessed, hey, amen. I didn't even know why you invited me. Because <laughs> I'm asking for you know, all the different messages and exhortations. We thank God, amen. amen. But uh, while we're here, if you want to turn with me to Genesis chapter 26. <clears throat> and brother who led the worship, God bless you. There's such a grace on your life. Amen. You know, as you were standing there, I just saw a library behind you. And um, I really believe God's going to begin to take you deeper in the Word of God. Yeah. And there's a teaching gift and grace upon you. That's a calling to teach and preach. That's going to begin to show up in the days. You, you are probably aware of that. Are you aware no. of that? No, I'm not. You're not? Well, now you are. <laughs> the Lord's going to confirm that. You know, and, it's, and there's going to be a period in the life where He'll take you into a time of some form of a Bible training school that I see in the future. Um, that I believe God's going to take you through the process. I didn't say drop everything you have now to do Bible school. But you're going to see a supernatural progression. And you're going to begin to hunger deeper for the Word of God. And you're going to want to know a bit more. You want to know more information. On the inside of you, as I'm speaking to you now, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to stir your spirit. And you're going to find yourself wanting to know, not just read the Bible on a surface level, you want to go deeper. Mm -hmm. And your desire and hunger for information and detail Hallelujah. about the things of the Spirit of God is going to set you on a journey. Mm -hmm. It's going to set you on a journey where the Spirit of God is going to begin to pull back layers of truth to you. And, to your, and certain things you're praying about on this level, you will not receive it. Because God needs to take you deeper to be able to begin to see it happen. Um, there is a gift upon your life. And maybe you're, you're seeking and praying for certain success in your life. But there's also a work God wants to do in your character. In taking you deeper in Him. I'm not saying you're, you're a man of character, you're a man of integrity. 
but I believe God is gonna want is looking to mature you deeper in Him, and it's gonna begin with your hunger for the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And as you go in the Word of God, God's gonna open up revelation and truth that's gonna cause the gift on the inside of you to begin to express itself in a greater capacity. Amen. So that's why I believe there are these books that are in the spirit behind you. Amen. You're going to read a lot of books. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Can I just ask you, you don't, you don't think my calling is for the worship? You think it's for the preaching? I believe it's part of it. Yeah. I believe it's part of it. And I, I don't get hung up on your calling because God takes us through seasons as well. Mm -hmm. God takes us through seasons in preparing us. I didn't start as a pastor. Hmm. Yeah, I started as a Sunday school children's teacher. Hmm. You know, you know, children when they are disturbing the service, they throw them in the room, <laughs> <laughs> and then they look for somebody to go and look after those children and to keep them quiet. I was the one that was selected, uh -huh. and that's where I started my own ministry. From there, I was a drummer in the praise and worship team. Okay. So God will take you through seasons. I'm not saying that I know you love worship, and that's part of you, part of part of what God has given you. But it's not a substitute, okay? But what, I'm what I can see is that God's going to develop you further. And the reason because you have a heart of worship, you know? David was not just a worshiper. David was a minister. David was a priest. David was a prophet. David was a king. So um, there are developments that is down the road in front of you. Okay. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. let's read the word and then we'll pray and then I'll share the word with you. And then if anyone needs specific prayer, we'll pray with you and I'll hand over. Is that okay? Amen. I know we've been here quite a while. Hallelujah. How many minutes do you give your guest speaker to, to, to share? I won't be too long. Praise God. Some people look hungry already. <laughs> I don't know if you've got chicken in the oven or something. But yes, we do. <laughs> there you go. So, we'll just stay with me for a few minutes. God bless you, Peter. All right. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We invite you, Holy Spirit, that you minister to every one of our hearts. Give us that which we can continue to work with. We thank you for establishing us in truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the words that have already been released over this atmosphere. Thank you that you are raising a remnant and that which we can see that you're doing. We ask that your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When we talk about, I, I, I was asked for a topic, and, I, and I, the word that I kind of came to was prospering in a time of famine. And the scripture that I wanted to use as our baseline is in Genesis 26. It says there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines, and to Gerah. The Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I will tell you of. Sojourn in this land, and I'll be with you, and I'll bless you. For unto you and your seed I will give all these countries, and I'll perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. And then it says, verse 6, And Isaac dwelt in Gera. And we go down to verse um, 12. And it says, Isaac sowed in a land that was seed in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the, and the man waxed great and went forth and grew until he became very great. Amen. 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 When we're talking about prospering in a time of famine, I want us to understand, we know there are shakings on the earth right now. There are things that are happening that we haven't seen before. Pandemic and all these things. And it's very easy to get your eyes on the negative and lose sight of what God is actually doing. And, and in the time on which we're living in, I want to encourage you that actually we're seeing greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm. We're actually seeing greater moves of God. We're actually seeing the Lord, you know, building his church and raising his people as an example and as a witness of his goodness. Can you say amen? amen. amen. I believe that God's going to use you guys in tremendous ways. He's already using all of you. We can see from the testimonies. But I believe the purpose for which God is using you is so that he can show people off what his kingdom is like. Mm. Hallelujah. So when people are saying family, you're saying we're blessed, we're prospered, we're moving forward. Because we represent the kingdom of God. And I believe this scripture was given to me because I was thinking about it and I was looking at the life of Isaac and I was re realizing that Isaac, I thank God for Isaac, amen? Because you know, there are some people that they just go with the flow. Because everybody is doing it, we're just going to do it. They said there is famine. Oh, okay. If there's famine, let's, let's look for what we can do to survive. But Isaac was able to hear God. 
And that's what you and I need to be able to do. Cultivate an ear to hear God. Thank you, sister, for the lovely scripture in Malachi chapter 3. Mm -hmm. But we need to be able to develop an ear to hear. Mm -hmm. If you look in the book of Revelations, the Bible starts with the last days, prophetic words. But one of the things that keeps being repeated to the church is, He that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen? Amen. And so there is an important thing here because Isaac, as soon as the famine showed up, Isaac switched into automatic pilot because his father had done the same thing. He's probably passed it down to the children. You know, there are some mindsets that are passed down from generation to generation. There are some attitudes and behaviors that fathers pass to children that they pass to their children. Uh, some people call it generational curses. Other people might say it's just something that our custom or they call it their tradition. But God is in the interest is interested in breaking patterns. Breaking patterns that are not in alignment with his calling and his purpose for your life. Amen. Amen. And so when we are talking about um, you know prospering at a time of famine, the first thing I wanted to bring across is the importance to discern the will of God in the earth, in your life. Mm -hmm. The importance of discernment will, the discernment is a word that God has been giving us lately. Because in the time we're living in, you need to be able to rightly interpret what is happening. Mm -hmm. Because as we can see, there's a lot of lies being you know, propagated to people. Mm -hmm. People are being spoon-fed a lot of lies. And if you do not have a discerning spirit, you can be deceived. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Bible says, one of the, the last days, mm -hmm. it says many will be deceived. Many will be deceived because they are listening and paying heed to what the Spirit of God is not saying. Mm -hmm. And you and I need to be able to discern, which the word discern means to differentiate, to distinguish, mm -hmm. to be able to separate what is of God from what is not of God. Mm -hmm. Are you here, people of God? Yeah. Amen? Amen? And so <clears throat> what we recognize, one of the things I appreciate about Isaac was, despite how he felt, despite his emotions, despite what the circumstances were saying to him, he could still take a time out and hear God for himself. And it takes a, a, a remnant, as our sister brought up, a remnant people, people that are willing to say, you know something, I'm going to put what, I, what God is saying as a priority over what else is going on in my life. What a testimony, sister, that you can you know, say no to student loans. I'm taking that testimony to our church. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you know, but it shows that this, this part what is going on, I know what my God can do. I know who God is, and I'm going to take what he says as a priority above whatever else anybody else is saying. That begins to set you apart and put you in a position where God can favor you. Hallelujah. Where God can favor you. You know, uh, and I want, this is what I'm seeing that, you know, the, the enemy wants people to be conformed to the ways of this world. Mm -hmm. But then we need to turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. And we will continue. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, I beseech you, brethren, verse 1, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 said, do not be conformed to this world. Another version says, do not allow the world to squeeze you into its mold. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, last year, many times, the Lord led us to talk about identity. You need to know who you are in Christ. Mm. You know, a lot of our young people will be praying, especially in this time, especially for the young people, because the enemy is trying to confuse people's identity. Mm. They're trying to confuse people, make them think that they're who they are not. Mm. So I'm thinking they are boy went a, a girl and all the rest of it. Yeah. You know, that is a, the, the enemy is coming at the core of people's identity. Mm -hmm. And in the church, we need to know who we are. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know who you are you you, and you begin to behave like you're not, you cannot experience the best God has for you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I've, I, some of us have grown up in families where sometimes culture can try to rob you of your identity. Mm -hmm. You know, in my house, coming up in my house, growing up, you know, in those days when we were growing up, you know, our parents would tell us what they want us to do. Yeah. They say, you, you'll be an engineer. You, you'll be a doctor. <laughs> you, will be a, you'll be a surgeon. You, you'll be a lawyer. Said, ah, 
I want to be a drama teacher. Shut up. You will be, a... <laughs> All right? you will be assigned and allocated according to the pension plan that our parents have. <laughs> Are you following me? And so as you're growing, as I'm growing, I wanted to be an engineer. Why did I want to be an engineer? Because I have four uncles who are engineers. My dad was an engineer. And so I figured, well, you know, this is running in the family. Let's just go for it. You know, when I got to university, I was in the University of London, King's College. Everybody had lab coats on because I, I got in and did engineering. And something on the inside of me, I just got born again. Something on the inside of me said, Bros, you're the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the dean of the college, a dean of the, uh, of the, is, of the, uh, of the faculty, and I said to him, sir, I need to get out of this place. <laughs> can you recommend somewhere, another course I can do? <laughs> because these guys, some, I don't click. <laughs> mm. They were lab coats and they were using terminology that I hadn't heard about. Mm. They were asking us to deal with equipment I wasn't comfortable with. Amen? <laughs> and, and even in the class, they asked us to draw a top-down view. Mine looked like psychedelic 3D, 4D <laughs> uh, structure. I knew even the way I was thinking, I wasn't thinking like this before. Mm. I realized I was out of sync wow. because I was trying to be who I am not. Mm. Are you here, people of God? Yeah. Praise God. So God is saying to somebody, be who I called you to be. Mm. If you allow the world of things, culture, tradition to start pulling you, you cannot be the best that God wants you to be. And thank God, God made a way for me to find out what he had for me. And when I entered what he had for me, the grace that he had was already there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here, people of God? Yes. This morning in church, we were talking about allowing ourselves to tap into the Holy Spirit that's been released over our lives. One of our pastors was saying that every one of us has been given the Holy Spirit, which is what the Bible says. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And I got up and said, yes, we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, but we need to know how to abide in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We need yeah. to know how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, in some people's lives, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. has been locked away mm -hmm. only, to sh only to be let loose on Sunday and go back into the room <laughs> for the rest of the week. If we use today's terminology, in some people's lives, the Holy Spirit is self-isolating. <laughs> <laughs> You understand what I mean? Yes? In some areas, you know, they don't want the Holy Spirit to be involved. In this area, they say, Holy Spirit, we need you. But when it comes to this area, please leave me. I'll do my own thing. And that's why sometimes some people are not experiencing God's power, God's blessing, God's fruitfulness as they should. Amen. Amen. That's why the scripture starts in Romans 12. I beseech you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice means, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. I'm laying it on the altar. I'm not saying it's easy, but Lord, I'm willing to lay it because by your spirit, you will allow me to overcome. Mm -hmm. It's not by my might or power, but by your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so it's that ability to yield to God and say, Father, I'm giving you the full control of my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So that's very important. If we're going to grow in being able to discern the leading of God, the voice of the Lord in this hour, we need to be a people that have yielded to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We'll be a people that are not allowing ourselves to be who God has not called us to be. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that took, it must have taken a lot of faith for Isaac not to follow the family tradition mm -hmm. that whenever there is famine, we just start heading into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's famine, we start, okay, let's go to plan two, plan B. Plan A is not working, we're going to migrate. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people, um, in some, certain countries we've been to, I had the opportunity to go to South Korea two years ago with my wife, and we were in um, <clears throat> Pastor Paul Song's Junior Brothers Church. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten the name of the place now, but it's lovely, lovely family there. But there are some countries you go to, and the reason people have gone there is because where they came from, there was problems, so they migrated. And so here Isaac was having the same thing. He was having a problem in one area. He wanted to jump to the next area. You know, there are some people that they, they don't like to stay in a place of discomfort. If there's discomfort, they start jumping out. They stay in one church and someone annoys them. They want to jump to the next church. They're in one relationship. Something doesn't go right. They're jumping out to the next one. You know, and in this situation, God came to Isaac and said, no, no, no. You're not jumping anywhere. You stay where you are. Because this 
this is where I have called you to remain. Hallelujah. You know, there are times where we have to stay and allow God to work us through things. Amen. 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 We don't have that kind of escapist mentality. Mm. Praise God. Amen. If it gets uncomfortable, I throw the towel in and I run away. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. You know, I know some people that are believing God for a spouse. They're believing God for marriage in the future. Amen. But right now, if somebody, if they begin to see a potential, as soon as the first argument, they cancel the relationship, block the number, delete the emails, <laughs> and they are now moved to the next relationship. Mm -hmm. And I say, hold on a second. Are you here? Amen. Some relationships take work. Amen. You take character development. Praise God. You may not agree, but with the love of God, am I hitting something here? It seems all of a sudden some people have become talkative. Of <laughs> Glory to Jesus. So, you know, it's only by the grace of God that God has taken my wife and I to in that 26th year of marriage. And some people look at you and say, ah, 26 years. No, 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 my brother, <laughs> my sister. It, it was not easy. It was by the grace of God. Amen. 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 Isn't it? We, we are putting to practice what we are learning. Amen. What the word is teaching us, we're putting it into practice. Amen. As we put it into practice, after some time, that word now begins to manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Someone said, did you, did you, have you argued before? Of course. Amen. Before we even got married. From the <laughs> second week after we met. <laughs> But by the grace of God, we say, okay, Lord, you're teaching us what it means to walk in love. Mm. Amen? Mm. Sometimes walking in love is painful. Mm. Praise God. Mm. But guess what? Because you're in the will of God, God will support. That's what he said to Isaac. <coughs> the famine might seem like it's uncomfortable. Mm. But if you stay in my will, I will bless you. Mm. If you stay in my will, I will prosper you. Mm. And the Bible says when he stayed there, History, Bible, some Bible scholars believe that when Isaac stayed in that place of famine, God began to give him the intelligence because he was into uh, uh, livestock. He was into rearing animals. And how can you rear animals when there is no water because of the famine? But God gave him the intelligence to start beginning to set up irrigation channels wow. so that his livestock could be well nourished and that he could survive. Amen? Amen. Because circumstances look challenging, it wasn't the time to check out. It was a time to check in with God. Mm. Are you here? Mm. It was a time to say, okay, God, you're going to make a way in this situation. Mm. Bible says God is faithful, mm. who will not allow you to be tested beyond what you can handle. Mm. But with every test, he makes a way of what? Escape. Escape. Mm. So that you and I can handle it. Mm. Are you here, people of God? So when there is a challenge, it's not a time to now start looking at, no, God has a way forward. He has a strategy. He has a plan. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And we've been discussing in our church about King David. King David was a mighty warrior. And whenever the enemy came against him, the first thing he always did, he went and sought the Lord. He said, God, what are you doing? He, David was skillful enough in his natural strength to go, say, you know something, I killed Goliath, I can handle you guys as well. But he didn't. He yielded his skill to God. I said, okay, God, what are we, how are we going to do this? And God will give him a plan of action. In one instance, God said, wait till you hear the sound of rushing in the mulberry trees. How many of you know the story? <laughs> And then you can go out. Another section, another, another instance, God said, okay, go around the back. Mm -hmm. You know, God will give him a plan of action because David was willing to look for the will of God and look for the word of God in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And what does that mean to you and I today? I'm, I'm speaking to some people. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is saying, if you will seek me in this situation, I will give you the strategy and the plan for victory. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's why the scriptures is encouraging us here in Isaac's situation, in Isaac's scenario. That even though there was a famine in the land, Isaac was still prospering. Mm. He was still going forward. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Some people are telling us inflation is 5%. Inflation is 6%. In the kingdom of God, there is no inflation. Mm. We are hooked up to heaven's wealth system. Mm. Yes. Amen. As Amen. long as someone was giving a testimony and said, as long as you're serving, sister was saying, as long as you're serving, 
God will bless the work of your hand. Mm -hmm. When you are aligned with the principles of the word of God, mm -hmm. when you know how to honor God with your offering and your tithe, when you know how to be a giver and also be one that is an encourager and support the cause of Christ, mm -hmm. praise God. Mm -hmm. I was walking with my daughter yesterday and I saw some of you guys preaching on the street. And I said, God bless you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God bless you. I saw sister and brother. I think it was both of you that were there preaching. I said, praise God for, for what the people of God are doing. Amen? Amen? But when you are seeking first the kingdom of God, you begin to see God take you every step of the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When my wife and I started the ministry, we didn't go to the nice places. God didn't send us to the nice places. The first place he sent us to was in India. We, went to, we lived in South India in, a, in an orphanage. In a village where they've never seen black people before. Mm -hmm. And we were there for almost five months to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And in the orphanage, the children, 200 orphan children, they're eating just twice a day. Mm -hmm. And they would have dal and rice. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, with the little we had, we had to try and find a way to get money so they can be fed. Mm -hmm. That was our first experience. God didn't say, my son, I'm calling you to Hawaii to go and <laughs> minister at the Hyatt Residency Hotel. No, 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 no. I didn't hear that at all. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he said he will be with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I was eating food I've never eaten in my life. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Some food, you know, the way it was cooked was out in the open. Hallelujah. I remember one time we went to a village to preach and the chicken was running around. The guy was chasing the chicken. I didn't realize that that, I didn't realize that, that was our dinner. <laughs> they went into the village, called us there. I didn't know that they killed the chicken, took out the feathers, fried it. We were having chicken curry. I said, oh, that's not, yeah, that was the chicken. You were <laughs> I said, wow. I said, this is, this is really, that went, I slept, in, we slept in the church. My wife and I, we slept. They had what they, it looked like a stretcher. Yeah, it wasn't a bed. It was a stretcher that was held up by sticks at each end. So my wife and I had to sleep. My head was here and her head was there. So it was like a balance. Yeah? And then we would just sleep and we had to be straight. This is in the church then because we're on mission. So we had to straight like this. Yeah. And then in the morning, there were lots of flies. So And so they wanted to serve us lunch and uh, after the service my stomach started growling <laughs> okay so some people want their prayer <laughs> so as i was praying i turned to myself and said, where's the toilet folks where's the toilet <laughs> i was out <laughs> but all in all god was good Amen. By the time we came back to UK, people are looking at us and you look so healthy, you look so fresh, you look so young. What have you been eating? What have you been exercising? You look so... I said, ah, <laughs> if you knew the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord, Amen. but the Lord, Amen. the Lord kept us, amen? amen? The Lord taught us a principle. He taught us a principle. He said, don't look at circumstances. As long as he is in it. As long as he's the one that sent you, mm. as long as he's the one that spoke to you, your needs will be met. Mm. You'll be taken care of. Yeah. He will support you. Mm. He will favor you mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Shall we lift our hands to the Lord? Oh, right yeah. now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the people of God. Yes, I pray for favor upon their yes, lives. Yes, yes, Father, yes. more importantly, I pray their eyes will be open. Yes, their ears will be unstopped yes, yes. to hear the voice of the Lord, yes, to hear the instructions, yes, the counsel, the wisdom, mm -hmm. the, in, the, the, the revelations that come by your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I pray that the people of God today will be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. They will not be led by the flesh. Mm -hmm. They will not be led by circumstances. Mm -hmm. They will not be led by tradition or culture. But they will know how to be led by the Spirit of the living God. And I pray, Father God, for those that perhaps have been carrying burdens because they're trying to be who you call them not to be. I pray that they will lay down side those burdens right now. I pray that where there have been people trying to uh, trying to fit into something you didn't call them to fit in. Father, today break them free, Jesus. Yes. I declare freedom yes. over the people of God. Freedom in their mind. Freedom in their emotions. Freedom in their will. Freedom in their hearts. In the name of Jesus. So they can serve you and do what you've called them to do. And be who you've called them to be. We release it on the people of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.
In Jesus' mighty name, my Lord, we present to you all the offerings and gifts and the fire to God. Father, you said in your word in Malachi that bring all meat to your house so that there's meat. What what the word says, God, but bring offer the tithe into your house so that you bring meat to your house. And Father, you also ask us that we'll try on this and see if you want to open this, God, God, heaven. Pour out blessings for that. 